Okay, welcome back. So here we are uh, in our next lesson, and we're going to take a look at the solution to the uh, image viewer. So let's take a look here at my solution. And so let's begin. The, the whole thing is, is about 64 lines or so, maybe a bit less because I got some spaces, but let's start here on line, the first line in the code. I have this uh, variable called x and I'm going to actually use that to be the indice uh, of the images and I need that to be a global variable. I'm calling get files. Let's go up to the function get files, get file names, here it is. And I'm opening up a directory chooser. Uh, that's built into FLTK, FL dir chooser, and uh, the the message that it gives is pick a directory to view photos, and this here I'm leaving blank, this string here because that's the first location. So obviously I'm that I want it to work with everyone. So it, this is actually going to open up in the directory that has that's running this program so if I typed in like for Linux if I typed in home and then my username that might work but then my username is hard-coded also there's one other option and that is whatever path you type in here so for example in Linux you can type in uh, dot dot but that doesn't work in so that means direct one directory level up but if you do that then you'll have to say relative uh, so there are two, uh, the third argument is whether the path, which is this argument here, is absolute or relative. And by default, it is an absolute path. So for example, an absolute path would be like this if I went home and then whatever the username is. Okay, So that's an absolute path. But by default, it's absolute. If I want to make it relative, I'll put a 1 in, but then this something like this would work which would mean that it would open up one level above but like I said dot dot only works for uh, Linux I don't think it works for Windows so I just left it blank and I didn't put in the optional third argument and you can then um, navigate to the directory you want however what I did find is that if the person clicked on cancel then uh, it returns none so D stands for the directory, which is re return. And if you return none, then uh, that didn't work out quite well. So I decided that this function should return an empty list because, it's ex because this is expecting to return a list. Now, let's say you do find a directory and you do return that directory. Then I'm going to do os.lister on that directory. And that's going to give me the file names in the directory. So then uh, I go through those file names in the directory and I'm only going to pick out the ones that end in PNG, JP JPG, or JPEG. And so I'm going to do a, a slice on the string starting from the fourth last character. So I'm going to take the last four characters of that file name. And if they are .png, .jpg, or .jpeg, that means I found some images in that directory and I'm going to append them and uh, by the way in order to make this operating system agnostic what I did is I used uh, os.path.join because one of the issues th is that if you take the for example um, if you take the directory this is how I kinda did it at first until one of my students went wait there's a better way to do this so uh, I did this I went plus and then pl uh, plus the um, the uh, the name, but this only works in, in Linux. It, it's not it, it won't work in other operating systems because in Windows it's not a forward slash; it's a backslash, and that's why OS dot path dot join does the right thing depending on what operating system you have. So you don't have to worry about that because essentially what I'm doing is I'm gluing together the path which is the directory and the file name and so that's that's done here then I'm returning the picture names 
okay? Uh, and listen, if, there's, if there happens to be no pictures in that directory, then, then look, picture names is going to be an empty uh, list again, which is fine. That's fine. So the next thing I do after line 37 is I set the uh, picture width to be 700 pixels. I'll set the button widths on the sides, on the two sides, to be 50. And then I will set the window width to be the picture width plus two times the button width. So in this way, I don't have to change too many variables if I decide to change the picture width. Uh, the widget, the sorry, the window height, which is WH, I set this as an arbitrary value of 300 to begin with because that's going to change depending on how big the image is. So just to start out with, I picked something and went with it. Um, the next thing I did is I create the uh, window. And I've made this, uh, I, I've you know, put a label at the top of PYFLTK Image Viewer. And I now start adding widgets to it. And um, I'm not going to, I decided not to add these, these widgets in a pack. And I actually don't find this very difficult in terms of setting the x, y, and the width and the height coordinates. Sometimes I actually prefer this because it's less code. And uh, it looks cleaner to me. In any case, uh, the first, the left button starts at 0, 0, button width, and uh, I set the width type to be the argument I set in line 41. These are really cool. All right, so uh, in the main page uh, of the documentation, here if we click on main, and we scroll down here to uh, labels and label types, ta-da, you'll see all these cool kind of um, built-in images that you can simply put in your code by putting the at symbol and then like a couple of characters. And so essentially what I've done here for my forward and back images, uh, I've just put at back for the left and at right arrow for the right. And then I did a really uh, interesting thing. So I set the callback for my left button and then I passed in the optional argument afterwards being negative one and you'll find out why I did that. Let's actually go up to the callback right now and take a look at it. Um, well here let's just let's just continue for a moment and we'll go there in a second. I set a tooltip so that if you middle click you can select a new directory. Perhaps this isn't the best way to do it but it's one way to do it. Uh, a better way maybe would be to make a menu at the top of the application. Uh, maybe we'll do that in the future. And then I made a shortcut. Now, the reason why I made it alt arrows is because I found that if I just made it FL left and FL right, it's actually um, conflicting with moving the focus because the right and left arrows are the arrow keys are also in charge of moving the focus to, of the buttons and so therefore I decided to use alt arrows and that works perfectly and as an extra convenience it's essentially the same behavior as a browser going uh, f forwards and backwards in web pages so I like that. Uh, then I make my picture box with its correct sizes and I make my right button, which is essentially like my left button, except the only difference is I'm passing positive one instead of negative one as the optional argument to the callback. Then this is pretty easy. Interestingly, though, uh, I do set, I have to make this window resizable, so I'm making the pick box, the picture box in the middle, uh, the resizable widget in the group. And uh, if you're wondering, there's no group. Yes, there is. A window is derived from FL group. So uh, a window is a subclass of an FL group. And I make the scheme plastic. And then I actually call this function, my uh, callback function, just so that I can see the first image when I start the program. And I show the window and go into my main loop on line 64. So let's go up to the, uh, let's go up to the callback here, which is the last thing we need to go over. I've imported FLTKN operating system. Uh, X is a global variable, and I need to do this because I need to be able to add right here on line 9. 
I need to be able to add uh, numbers to it. So this is a cool part I'm about to get to. Uh, the one thing here is I just say, listen, if, if the event was a, a middle click, then clear the files and then get new file names. And that's going to, when I get new file names, it's going to call the file chooser again and you're going to end up uh, picking new files and everything's going to be cleared. Interesting thing here. I cannot do files equals empty list here because if I do that, file, the variable files is going to become a local variable and I don't want that. So this line seven is a clever way of deleting everything inside a list without creating a new list and thereby creating a local variable. Because I don't want it to be a local variable. I want, this, I want the files list to exist outside of this function. As soon as you make it a local variable, it's not going to exist outside of the function. So this is like a clever, clever trick because we're not using classes. If we, if we made this into a class, I wouldn't have to worry about this. Uh, but object-oriented programming will come later on in the course. So uh, yeah. Let's just scroll down here and this part is where I add the argument passed. So n, if you notice n here, is the argument that I passed and it'll be either plus one if you click on the right side of the image or negative one if you click on the left side. If you remember, that came from here, the callbacks. Negative one for the left one and positive one for the right one. So it's kind of neat because I don't, I don't have to have an if statement here. I, I'm using the same callback for both buttons, which is very convenient. I don't have to write a, a separate callbacks. Now, um, what I do here is, do you remember there was, a, there was a situation where if there were no images in the directory which we chose, then the list that we returned here on line 34 would be an empty list. Well, that's what I'm checking for here. If, I, if the length of the files list is zero, then make, give, them, give the user a pop-up that says, hey, listen, there's no directories. There's no, sorry, there's no photos in this directory. And end the callback. Now, this line is a pretty cool line, and I gotta actually show this to you in a in a, in a decent way. So I'm going to open up a, a paint program here and kind of show you the uh, mathematics behind it. Uh, so here I have essentially x mod len files. So let's assume here that files is, here we go, Let's say files has um, files A, B. I'm not going to write full file names. I'm just going to, you guys get the idea here. I do this. Now, these files have indices 0, 1, 2, 3. And if I keep, you know, the, the expression was x equals x plus n. Well, if I click on the this is the right hand button and this is the left hand button. This is plus one and this is negative one. So this is going to be plus one or negative one. So if I keep clicking here, well, I'm going to go past the end. So what happens? What if I get to four? Well, it's okay because I'm not going to go out of range of the list because what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm saying files x mod len files. So in essence now, what's the len of files? In this case, there's four. So therefore, when I'm, when I'm at number four, it would be four mod four. And of course, that's going to be zero. So essentially, when I get here, it's going to push me back because I'm modding. It's going to push me back to the beginning once I go past the end. So this is what's called clock arithmetic. So if you think of it, if there was four items here, it'd be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 goes back to 0. And, and it doesn't matter. I'm never, when I mod by the 
length of how many things I have in here, I'm never going to go past the edge. Because if, if I go to the next one, I'll go 5 mod 4. Well, that's going to give me 1. And so essentially, 5 is going to put me here. So I can click hundreds of times on this, and it's going to put me in the right place. And by the way, the other cool thing about the way Python handles negative, so if I went uh, negative, uh, let's say, well, yeah, exactly. If, if I went negative 1, let's say you know, you're at 0 here, and you, go, and, you, and you click here, and now you're at negative 1. Well, what's negative 1 mod 4? Let's try it. So, because I sometimes I have difficulty remembering, because different different programming languages treat uh, negative numbers slightly differently with mod. But watch this. Let's go negative one mod four, and I don't know if you can see that. Um, hold on. There. Uh, negative one mod four is 3, which is exactly what I want. So essentially, uh, oh, maybe you can't see. Oh, yeah, you can see this. So uh, that's going to bring me back here. So negative numbers are OK, too. And it doesn't matter how many times I click on this. This one line takes care of everything for me. And I really like that. So once again, the mod uh, operation in programming is very useful. OK, so now let's go to the next line. And now I decided that I didn't want just to be able to use PNGs. I also wanted to be able to use JPEGs. So I have to kind of check. But at this point, you notice the only thing in here should be either a JPEG or a PNG. So if it's not a PNG, then it's got to be a JPEG. So I have to be able to create them properly because the Initializer for a PNG and for a JPEG is different in uh, FLTK. Then I'm going to grab the image width and the height and divide it to get the aspect ratio, AR. And then I'm going to take the picture width and divide by the aspect ratio and convert that to an integer because it has to be an integer because pixel heights cannot be floating point. And then I'm going to resize the window. Okay. And uh, here, I don't want the location of the window to change, so I'm going to specify the window's location to be where it is currently, which is the window dot x. Dot x will actually return the x location of the window, and y will return the y location of the window. So those aren't changing; those are staying the same. And the width is not changing either. That's a constant value. If you remember, the window width uh, was, in this case, it was 800 because the button widths were 50, so 50 plus 50 plus 700. And now the one thing that does change is the height. And so now when I go to uh, change resize the image, I'm simply going to go image.copy, which is the resize in FLTK, and the picture width, and I'll change the height. And then I'm going to call redraw on the pick box, which is the center box. OK, so if I run this program and I pick a directory, and we can now take a look at the images. And notice the, uh, the window changes height when I go to an image that's a different height. And so you can see that. And, they, that, and, and when, I when I move it around, too, it stays where it is, which is kind of nice, too. Well, that one had to move up to fit it. But um, the other cool thing that I can do is I can uh, write, or not write, foot, but I can see there is the tooltip that pops up. It says middle click to, to view another directory. So I can middle click, and then I can pick a different one. And then I pick a different directory and scroll through that one as well. So that's the program, and um, and you know back works too. And also I can also use my keyboard to uh, 
go alt right, alt left, alt right, alt left, and that works as well. So that was the program, and uh, that was that's my code. Okay. By the way, just to let you know, I did test this just now, and um, this actually works with transparent images. So uh, I was wrong. So I can I can delete that out and take this line out. Okay. So 